Um, but at any rate, let's take a look at, at this, um, getting ready to punch it down. And of course, I'm going to use the cutting side, the cutting edge right here. And let me get some of this other stuff out of the way. I'm going to use that cutting edge and I'm going to slide it down. You see where it, the cutting edge is? I'm going to use that on, and the cutting edge on the outside. And again, you get that little shelf there on the outside. Let me point that out. Use this little piece of wire as a pointer. Uh, you got that little edge right here that the blade's going to go up against. Okay. Now I can hold this in my hand because that's what it's designed to do. Please bear with me. I'm standing in between a tripod and I got a camera next to my face, and my elbows are on this table here. But we're gonna. I'm going to try to punch this blue wire down. And again, I'm using the blade. It's going to go right into here. It's going to slide in, and then. It's going to push the wire all the way down, but that wire has already been pushed down by that blue um, inexp inexpensive uh, punch down tool. But this one is the one that's actually going to cut it off. So again, you can use your wire cutters and things like that at this point and cut these off, or you can just, uh, you know, um, use the right tool, the most expensive, and it's going to come down. Now, normally, I don't know, just by habit, I've always done this. I've hit it twice. Um, when I do it and you'll see the blue one is just hanging on there with a thread and it's a nice clean cut. You can't actually get that clean of a cut um, with uh, wire cutters and so that's that's what you got. So you know and I'm just showing with one pair. Again this is not how to cable a jack. Maybe I'll do that again. I haven't done one in a couple of years and I'll do a a video on that but you just click down and again my habit has always been do it twice not once and it just comes off this when you're done all the cables on this thing you just snap this little white thing on it and it keeps the wires in place while you wiggle them around um, these are called keystone jacks and reality, you know what a keystone is, is that on an arch they have that triangle, similar triangle uh, type um, brick that holds uh, the two sides of the arch uh, together. The arch wants to fall in on itself, but it doesn't, but it doesn't matter. That's architect. This is cabling. This is a standard keystone jack. It's the same size same connections they're all the same if they say keystone it's not a manufacturer <laughs> i remember i talked to this cabling guy years ago i couldn't believe it i was talking to him about my jacks and all and he said he wouldn't buy my jacks and i said why he said because they're keystone and i've had problems with keystone and it took a couple conversations before i realized that he thought keystone was the manufacturer rather than the standard so the name Keystone just means it's square, it has certain dimensions on the sides, and it has a hook that's a certain dimension. It has these little, these little grippers here, and they are all interchangeable. So if you have a Keystone jack, it's going to work in a Keystone wall plate. It's going to snap into that wall plate. Uh, they're all standardized now. Uh, it wasn't that way years ago. But Keystone is just the standard is, you know, it's like the 110 plug, you know, uh, AC plugs you got in your house, uh, you know, they can plug into any outlet. <laughs> um, whether you have a three prong or a two prong, they're, they're always going to work in the outlets. And it's the same thing with the name Keystone. It's not a manufacturer. It's a design. So you, you have this type of uh, punch down. I can punch down all the rest if I wanted to, but again, it's you know for time wise, I'm not going to do that. Now I have this other device here. Now you can use this as a punch down device. You can put your jack in there. Uh, you can take my word for it. You can. You can put it in there, and then of course you can hold it in your hand, and you can punch down. Now, as you notice, this is a little more awkward than the, the other jack. Of course, this bends a little bit and holds it in place, and it protects your hand. Well, I used to, <laughs> not used to, I have punched down using my palm. So, you know, I get the punch down tool, and I punch down using my palm. 
But man, your palm gets sore after a while, so you have to use a hard material, you use it, you know, cardboard, wood, or you know, a puck. And it's it's designed to use in your hand, as you can see with this this design. It's designed to use in your hand. Um, what else does it have? It has some sort of nice little extra stuff written on the side, you know, to help you in the, the size of the cable goes. There. I never pay attention to that junk. Uh, I just uh, I know how to put a jack together, and I know that that what model, whatever model I have, and they're all going to be Keystone on this. There's a couple different models. Uh, are going to fit one of these holes and so that's where I put that in I hold that here I do all my uh, distribution of all my cables and then I'm able to uh, uh, do this and just hold it or I'm able to put it on the carpet and punch down on the carpet so that really is a great device it's not very expensive again it saves itself in time I don't know what that hole is in there Maybe you can screw it onto a big piece of wood or something. I don't know. Who cares? But this one is a little different. Uh, and the why it's a little different is it's also not, not just a, a uh, uh, punch-down uh, puck, but it's also a pulling puck, as they call it. You see how that grips that? It just grips it, and, man, it, it won't let go. So sometimes you need that extra strength in pulling the cable. Now, I've seen guys... I think guys stretch the cable and wrap it around their foot and pulling it down through a conduit that's in the ceiling. So they'll be standing up underneath the conduit. They'll wrap the cable around their foot and then they'll push with their foot. You, you really can't do that. Um, you're you're going to stretch out the cable. It does stretch and you're going to change the characteristics of the cable. But just to get a grip sometimes on these cables like this, especially if you use you know, if you're using uh, what they call soap, wire soap, um, and it's in a conduit, um, when it comes out, that, that cable comes out of that conduit, it's going to be very slippery and, um, and because that's what wire soap does. Now, it's special soap. You just, I guess you could use this detergent, you know, and, and you, you cover the, the cable in that type of soap, and it slides nicer through conduit. But when it comes out the other end, it's kind of messy, and it slips all over the place and it slips through your hand and all. Well, that's what this um, uh, cable puck does. It, it grabs it. Man, it grabs it, let me tell you. You're not, that's not going anywhere, and I'm not putting a lot of force on this. But you just have to remember that you can't wrap this around your, your foot when you're pulling you know, uh, down from the ceiling and push with all your might and all your weight to pull the cable through the conduit. If you do that, the cable is trash, man. You're just not doing it right. And when it comes to conduit, I don't recommend any more than two 90-degree bends in a conduit. If you have more than that, you're going to need an access box within the conduit. Now, this, that's way beyond the scope of this um, discussion. The next thing I want to uh, talk about is I want to talk about the 66 block. And, you know, I see people ask questions sometimes. Well, you know, what is, why is this split and, and why would you have a split? Well, a lot of times with uh, dial tone, you know, people are having problems with their dial tone. They're hearing crackling and noise and everything else. Well, you need to separate the device uh, from uh, the phone company uh, power uh, or, you know, their dial tone that they're providing you. And the reason you do that or, or how you do that is you bring in your COs on the left side, your, your central office lines on the left side. And then on this side, this is where the central office lines go for, uh, for the phone system. Now, again, we're dealing with some technology that quickly uh, is running its, its time. Um, but what you would do is you would put in these things called six, uh, bridge clips. And they're stainless steel, things like that. And they slide right over it like that. And you can just push them down. And now they're bridging. So, of course, we're dealing with a pair, so you have to do two. And that's going to be your blue-white pair at the very top. And if this is dealing with a 25-pair cable, I do have a video on the 25-pair cable. But this now um, attaches the, uh, the electrically from this side to this side. So you got wires coming in here, and you got wires coming out. And if you need to separate those, isolate that circuit to do troubleshooting, you just pull these out and you, you know they come out pretty easily as you could see 
I don't know if you could see me doing that. But you know, you can take a you know Lyman scissors, or you can um, take a little screwdriver, and they'll just come out. Or let's see, maybe you can take this. Imagine you could take your you know your little. Let's let me get this a little bit further away so you can see it. So you know you can take your your clip, you can fit it there. It has a little hole in the side if you can see. These clips have a little bit holes in the side. There's two of them together. Let me get one. Gosh, they're all. So they have a little hole in the side where you can fit that that gripper into and pull it out. You don't have to have a special tool to do that, but that's how it comes out, is, is by that. And that isolates the two circuits, and you can test. Do I still have, uh, put your butt set on here, and you can test it to see if you got static, and if the static disappears, and you got something with your phone system. You can put it on this side to see if you have static, and you know one way or the other where the problem is based on the split 66 with bridge clips. Um, if you see this with a red cover, and they do have these red covers. Sometimes they're orange looking. That's a that belongs to the phone company, and that's their CO line. So, you know, it's something that um, that they separate. Also, like this is it's a split 66, and when they're troubleshooting, they'll do the same thing. They'll pull their bridge clips off, and they'll test one side, which is going towards their equipment uh, at their central office, or they will check the other side to see if they have problems on that side. So that's a 66 block. That's its normal configuration. Um, a standoff bracket along with the 66 block. Um, and you have that. So today, you, we, we talked about a lot of different things. Um, we talked about the, the three different types of punch down. I'm sure there's others. I'm sure there's other brands and other uh, designs and things like that but they all basically do the same thing sometimes they come with this red cap and this just protects them while you're shipping them so it doesn't poke through the packaging uh, type of thing um, so you can just throw that uh, that red thing away but these are the three types my personal preference even though this one sells for more which supposedly means our company makes more money my personal preference is these two with a 110. Now I have 66 because I've done, you know, and I've kept it back there. Um, I've done 66 and 66 blocks uh, for, you know, many, many years, and I know how they work and how to identify cables and things like that. Um, you know, one other thing, right before, and we're not done yet, so please don't go away. Uh, please um, like the video if this has been beneficial for you please like the video uh, comment on the video this stuff encourages me to do more if I I know people are benefiting from it and I also know that people like the content that I'm, I'm going in the right direction and it helps them then please like and comment and subscribe I have so many people watch the videos but they never subscribe and of course that helps the algorithm when you subscribe so if you want to help me if this is helping you and you want to help me subscribe and like uh, and comment uh, but anyway make long story short before we end and it's gonna be a little bit longer before we end um, my background 40 years uh, in IT started in the Marine Corps Marine Corps captain ran a data center um, also cybersecurity also electronic warfare also a lot of other things um, when it comes to IT it was a great experience and maybe that's where if, if you're not in IT and you want to start maybe that's the way to go uh, start in the military um, but the bottom line is um, that I also now do consulting. I sold my company. I had a handful of employees or more, had a lot of employees. Always it was in the black. We've done major installs uh, all over the United States. Uh, kept a lot of people busy, and I had uh, subcontractors, hundreds of subcontractors that worked for us. Uh, trained hundreds of people in the IT field. Uh, when they worked for me, I had to, you know, bring them up to uh, teach them how to cable, then teach them how to program, and teach them how to uh, talk to customers. Wow, that sometimes that's hard for people. They just don't get it that customers are the ones that pay the bills, uh, and you have to treat them with respect. And I, I'm surprised there's so many people have trouble with that. Um, but 
you know, you just need to grow up, man, and realize that just because you know a lot about uh, voice and data networks doesn't mean that um, that uh, that there's somehow dummies or something like that. That's for another video. I've already discussed that in another video. Uh, but the bottom line is I do consulting um, and I do project management. So if you have a company, um, you know, a big corporation, let's say, and you're, you're doing a major install and you need to cable building or anything else like that, I, I have uh, the experience in data centers and cabling big buildings and cabling small buildings, all types of construction. And so I can assist you with that uh, if you would like a consultant. Uh, or if you like a project manager, the, someone that can actually go down and look at what you're doing, uh, look at the plans, look at your bids, and I can tell you whether or not you're getting a good deal and what type of technology you should have at different places. Uh, I remember once we got a big job, a big job from a big company. I'm sure you would recognize the company. Um, we were bidding against them, and they were higher uh, than us uh, doing the install. And, the, and uh, uh, the company asked us just to look at their bid. They turned down my bid, uh, my salesman's bid, but they hired us just to look at the, uh, uh, the nationwide company, the national company that's well known, that's all throughout the United States was doing this cabling. And we looked at their design and we pointed out that the design wouldn't work because they went way over um, the maximum length of cable and so we asked we told them that we would re you know we'd show ours and why ours was a better design and why ours would work and theirs wouldn't and it was an honest look it wasn't you know ours is better than yours ah ha ha type of thing no it was an honest look at, at what was the difference and why theirs wouldn't work so I don't know where they got their consultant from but their design would not work and uh, plus they were more expensive so I can help you in these type of areas, uh, contract negotiations, things like that, help you with pricing, help you with design work, and make sure that you've, um, you know, you're doing it correctly. Because once you put that cable behind the wall and uh, you hook it all up and you turn on your network, uh, it better work. Um, you don't want to be fooling around with it. And you don't want people who don't know what they're doing when it comes to cabling or cabling design work uh, to... Uh, uh, to do your contracting uh, for you. So again, thank you for watching the, the video, and I do appreciate it, and a thumbs up, likes, and comments, and I will catch you on the other video. You have a great day.